Hey guys, what's up? This is Nasrdu and you're watching DCS and today we are flying behind and let me ask you, how did you like the intro? Do you want to learn to do this? Then you're absolutely right here um, because I was thinking a little bit how I could help you guys to master the vertical landing and I came up with a kind of boot camp. I don't know. It's a it's a four step um, tutorial series that I'm planning. And what you've seen there would be step four, our ultimate goal. And I promise you, if you follow the instructions, if you stay with me, and if you do the practice that I'm about to show you, you will get there pretty quick. It will take some time, it will cause frustration in the meantime, but you can do it, believe me. I did learn it, I'm not a uh, professional pilot or something like this. I did learn it, so you can do it too. Okay, so what we are going to do today is um, I've created a mission where we can practice uh, four different things. The topic for today is in ground effect hover and for that we will pick the 500 meter track client here and that was set us in our MI24 and let me explain what's going on here. I, I built this lane here where you will learn and master the in-ground effect hover. We should start at the beginning and clarify because some of you guys maybe um, bought the hind as their first helicopter module on DCS and some things might be new to you. So I'm, I'm considering that there are some absolute um, beginners here in the series and that's why I will try to explain it as um, as easy and as basic as possible. So what is in ground effect hover? When you're hovering you can do it with the ground effect or out of ground effect. Ground effect just means that the downwash of your rotor blades um, presses the air down and from the ground the air will um, yeah, stream up again and then there is a kind of a cushion that you can float on. Um, the height of that cushion is, I don't name me on this one, but I think it's um, related to the, um, to the diameter of your uh, rotor wings. So it should be 12, 50 meters, something like this. I, I don't really know. It's, 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 it's also not really important. You will, later on, you will feel it when you leave it um, and when you get into it. Uh, all you have to know is when you're close to the ground hovering it's easier because you're sitting on a cushion. That's all you have to know actually. Um, okay so let's let's prepare the chopper. Preparation complete? No I'm just kidding. Um, let me explain what we want to do. For the first try I will activate all of our assistant channels here. I want to call them flight assistant from now on and not autopilot because that describes a little bit better what they are doing. They are assisting you and they level the chopper out and keep it in a, in a certain heading. Um, and what we are going to do, we will also put the uh, side on because um, it's always good to have a reference point. Um, we will now get into a hover stationary and we will follow that lane and break in front of these final uh, pylons there. It's 500 meters from here to there. We will do it really slow and when you do it at home <laughs> I want you also to start slow. That's very important. Um, we will increase speed later but First things first. Before you want, uh, before you run, you have to walk, and before you walk, you have to crawl, and that's why we start with crawling. 
Okay, so now with all these assistants on here, I take my feet off the pedal and I want to explain one more thing before we start. If you're used to fly fixed wings aircraft, your brain knows, okay, when I push the throttle, I will get forward thrust and when I pull the uh, joystick, I can regulate my altitude. In a chopper, it's a little bit of an opposite. You have the collective here to regulate your altitude and you have the cyclic to get forward momentum and speed. Keep that in mind. Okay, but I, I think we should start here because uh, you may be bored <laughs> at this point uh, just watching here staring at a sitting helicopter. So what we will do, we will add collective to get into a hover state and um, it's a good thing to know that um, this is the rotor pitch um, gauge here. It shows when you move the collective, this needle shows how the rotor is pitched in degrees. And at seven to nine, the helicopter will do his first movements. That's the point where, where you have to come in and uh, counter or react to whatever the chopper is doing. With all those guys on here, what you have to do when you uh, add in collective is exactly nothing. Let's demonstrate that. And it's also good to know that at about 11 degrees you will get into hover height. Um, the needle will be 11.2 or something. Um, just about there. I do trim to a position that I think is a good position for the cyclic or my hover. So I will now add collective and you see at around 7 we have the first movements but we will let the chopper do its thing. I'm not touching anything here. 9. I'm correcting what the nose is doing with the cyclic. 10. 11. There we go. I did almost nothing. So we're a little bit backwards here, but that's okay. I'm just giving minimum input to the cyclic, giving a little bit more collective, and there we go. Perfect hover. The nose is not really straight, but I don't care. It doesn't have to be perfect and don't try to be perfect. Um, this is a chopper after all and it's moving, that's absolutely normal. So if it's a little bit off, doesn't, doesn't matter. Okay, and what we will do now is push the nose down just a little bit to make him start moving. And we will speed up to around 20 kph on the slip indicator and we will try to keep it. We will try to keep this speed. If we're getting faster, nose high, make it break and we want to gently go down that lane and I'm having nothing to do on the pedals because the assistant for your is doing it for me and I can also trim at this point to trim for that speed for 20 kph. Okay, that was a little bit too much. Nose down, speed up, and try to keep it in that range. That's your job. When you reach the end of this of this lane, try to stop in front of uh, the pylons there nose up and we're on a stop here. What you do now, of course, you give some pedal 
and make it gently turn. Don't hesitate. Turn around slowly, slowly. You want to do it controlled. You can add up speed later. Go around. Get back to the middle of the lane. Nose down. And slowly fly back. Don't worry if you're like me here, side slipping. That's not that important. Important is that you that you have control. If you're going in the right direction, but with the nose a little bit off, doesn't matter. What's really important is that you control the airspeed. Keep it at 20. And crawl back these 500 meters. And try to stop at the last um, last pylon. So when I put the nose up here, I'm reducing the collective just a tiny bit. Because I don't want him to climb. And back to these 11-ish uh, degree on the rotor pitch. Turning back, trying to stay on spot. As slow as possible. And now I'm reducing collective. Not too much, just a little bit to make him touch down. All right. So, and if you did this, let's correct the nose a little bit here. When you did this, and it works pretty good, the next thing I want you to do is turn off all those assistants. So I'm resetting the trim here. Okay. And I'm turning them off. All of them. And you will see that this is a little bit more tricky. I am again positioning the cyclic where I think is a good spot for a hover. Most of the things work the same. Um, you will start to move at something like seven, nine degrees. And you will take off at about 10 to 11. And you will see that without these assistants, it's not that easy. Um, the nose will try to go left. And I'm talking here all the time that's also a little bit difficult um, because the uh, heading channel is not countering for the torque anymore now you have to do it with right rudder input if you want to know why the helicopter is um, nosing to the left um, ask your local physics professor we don't need to know why that is so. I could explain, but I think it's enough to know that it happens and that you have to <laughs> give right rudder to counteract. Okay, now with all these channels off, we do the same thing. We put the nose down and make him move. And we will make him move at the speed that we want. Try to get to and hold 20 kph on the slip indicator. Try not to accelerate above it. If we do so, we get the nose up. If it's too slow, we put the nose down. And you see you can see that's much more wonky 
than with all these assistants. But that's normal. I mean, we have a short joystick. We cannot give those minimal uh, uh, inputs that um, the chopper pilots can do with the long throw of their sticks. But we are holding the speed perfect. We are almost in the middle of the lane and that's what we want to achieve. And slowly working my way here to the end and coming to a stop in front of these pylons. All right, and what you should notice is that that um, how torque and the cyclic or the pitch degree of the rotor is related. We will learn more about that later. By the way, when I'm doing a stationary turn, I prefer to go left. Simple reason is that the chopper wants to go left anyway and I can let him go. I don't have to press against the torque, I can use it for the turn and that way it's a little bit more easy, I think. Okay, and now that you've done that and you feel comfortable with it, let's try to find out what happens if you go faster. Um, so I already placed the collective at a, at a point where I think it's good for a hover. I have all these channels on, so I'm taking my feet off the pedals, increasing collective slowly so the assistant systems can catch up. Nose goes up, I press a little bit forward. So we are at 9, we should take the feet off the ground. And 11 and a little bit, and we're good. Okay, what we do now is we, we will go to the end of the lane at about 40 kph. And we will try to stay below the red bar. So, increasing speed here, slowly and controlled. Now I'm braking a little bit. Feed on the pedals for preparation. Still doing 40, getting slower. Nose up. Taking my time. Still moving forward. It's okay to do it like this. You don't have to be the stuntman. And we are there. Um, what you should notice is that my cyclic is now in the same position as it was and we took off. I did not trim in between because I know when I bring the cyclic back to that position and I have slowed down, I will be in the hover state again. So let's turn around now and go a little bit faster. What you will notice then, spoiler alert, the chopper is going to lift. Um, we will let him uh, rise up until we are between this uh, the red marking in the middle and the top marking. And we will try to control the height with the collective and get to a stop at the end of this lane. So a little bit in the middle working a little bit with the uh, your assistant. He's a little bit off now, but that's okay. So, forward on the cyclic. I'm not doing anything on the collective right now. Getting faster, and there we go. Chopper starts to 
climb as we go faster. So I know I have to brake at this point if I want to come for to a stop and I have to really um, be careful with the with the collective because when I when I pull back on the stick the chopper will try to uh, try to climb and I'm countering this by taking away collective but as I fall down I have to add some juice to not yeah touch the ground and crash but this is something that you will learn by doing this practice and I would say that's enough for today um, try this we have another track here on the left where we will go in the next video and do these things a little bit faster if you're bored you can try it now or you can try to go sideways through that lane um, I don't know if there's really enough space but I think you can you can fly into these can you? yeah you can um, so don't worry about that okay there's a there's a 1000 meter lane and we're doing the same thing here but with much more speed and this will lead us to the transition it will help us to to get good in transitioning from uh, high-speed flight into hover and that ultimately leads us to the point where we can do pretty quick vertical landing all right and if you are if you are a little bit frustrated <laughs> because things don't work the way you want it I did place some trucks here at the end you can add some more if you like and take some rockets let them know that you didn't like the mission and blast them away you feel better then and do another try on the hover practice all right guys um thank you for watching I hope you did get something out of this video as always feedback is absolutely welcome I enjoy doing this and I hope it helps some of you to have more fun in this wonderful module and as always I say take care and bye bye